Welcome back to Common Core Unit 1 Part 3. But before we begin, challenge for you. I want you to see if you can count how many people are in this little car. I hope you hadn't seen that before. It's always fun to show you the first time. Okay, so here we're going to do a new term. It's called a variable. Now, what's a variable? Well, it's a book definition that in elementary mathematics, a variable is an alphabetic character representing a number, a value of a number, which is either arbitrary or not fully specified or unknown. And the guy's like, what? Uh, easy to understand. A variable is a letter or symbol that represents a value. Say x equals 5. Now, why is x equals 5? Someone said x equals 5 for this particular example. Okay, fine. x equals 5. Now, take this problem. x plus 3 equals what? Well, if x equals 5, I'd simply replace x with the 5. Okay, well, 5 plus 3 is 8. Therefore, x plus 3 equals 8, since you said x equals 5. <clears throat> now, you don't even have to use a letter. I could say smiley face equals 9. And now, if I say smiley face times 4, well, since smiley face equals 9, I simply replace smiley face with 9 and get 9 times 4, which makes 36. Now, the next step in this is monomials. Now, monomial is a fancy way of saying a combination of numbers, symbols, or letters that represent values. For instance, a monomial could simply be a regular old number, 7, okay? It could be a number and a letter pushed together. Remember, this means 5c or 5 times c. You could have a number and a couple letters. You could have 17a and b, all touching to the all times. Yes, I don't know what a and b is, but this is telling me I have 17 times a times b, and when someone tells me what A and B is, I can give them an actual answer. And finally, you don't even have to have letters. You could have like four, smiley face, and blue star, if you so chose. Now, <clears throat> this is the same for letters as variables. Now, suppose I have J to the third power times J to the sixth power. What I'm really saying is I have three J's and six more J's, and combined, I have nine J's. So you try, I want you to try to combine these three guys here to figure out what it is. Hopefully you understood. If not, I'll help you. I have five x's and two more, so I'm going to make seven x's, or x to the seventh. I have two j's and 12 more j's, so j to the 14th. Five stars and three more stars, which makes star to the eighth power. And again, remember that when you're multiplying you know, base exponents like this, you're just simply adding the exponents together. Skill practice 1.3.1. Go ahead and try these three. Let's see how you did. Got 8 of the 10th, end of the 127th, and rocket ship to the 82nd power. Remember this from the last section. You have 3 to the 8th times 2 to the 1st times 3 to the 3rd times 2 to the 9th. Remember that you can combine the bases that are the same. So, okay, I have 3 to the 8th and 3 to the 3rd. Those are the same bases. They both have 3. And I have 2 to the 1st and 2 to the 9th. So, I simply combine the 8 and 3 of the 3's and make 3 to the 11th. And 2 to the 1st and 2 to the 9th, which make 2 to the 10th. All you can do then is just put them side by side. Now, you might say, wait a minute, can't they just be touching because they're times? Well, yeah, but that's with letters. It's just easier to put an actual times figure here since I have two separate bases and different exponents. It just makes it look a little cleaner. Now, with the other variables, suppose I have like s to the 8th, t to the 1st, s to the 3rd, t to the 9th. You're going to combine them again. You're going to say, okay, I have 8 s's and 3 more. 1t and 9 more, so same thing as before. Combine 8 and 3 and make 11, which makes s to the 11th, and I'm going to combine 1 and 9 to make 10, so t to the 10th. Put them side by side. It's just easier. Now, you could do this as well, so I'll let you do either. You say, wait a minute, how come I have a times here, and this time you just put them together? Well, 
because they're letters you can get away with this a little more easily but you don't have to you can put it times and for the last one you really could if you wanted just get rid of the time you could just put it like this if you so chose but I argue that some people might find it to be a little more confusing but again I'm gonna give you a little bit of latitude on this you decide what's best for you and I'll show you what I normally do and hopefully you agree now you try combine like bases let me move this up here so combine sunshine moon a and b frowny cat and goldfish go ahead oh i need to combine them excuse me i have let's see <clears throat> let me combine sun five and two make seven so i'm going to have sun seven and moon i'm going to have moon seven here i'm just going to read them off because i think you know them it's going to be a to the 36th b to the 10th Frowny Cat doesn't change. Frowny Cat's still the 5th power, and Goldfish 2, it looks like, the 19th power. Mm -hmm. Okay, skills practice. Time for you to do stuff. So, we have some Team Fortress guys here. We have this guy up here, and this guy here. Go ahead and combine, combine bases, please. Let's see how you did. I got C the 17th, Z the 54, Blue Guy 29, Team Fortress guy to the 95th, 2 to the 9th, 9 to the 7th. Now for something new. You see 3 times z squared, you can put a coefficient, which is a number, a regular old number, and a variable together. Now what I mean is this 3 is by itself, and this z squared is by itself. But I can simply combine those two, because remember when they're touching their times, so I'm just going to write 3 z squared. So this becomes this, and this is a much cleaned up version of this. Where here you have 7 and a to the 4th, I'm simply going to combine them two, because remember when they're touching their times. This is a very common algebra term when you have a number in front of a variable and the number in front is called the coefficient. So from now on, when you see a number in front of a variable, it means coefficient. <clears throat> and now, when you combine, let's say, a 3 z squared and z squared, combine those two z squares together to make z to the fourth and three simply sits in front of it now does the three have to sit in front of it no you could put the three here but again we want to kind of you know stay in the mainstream with math and what one person looks for another person looks for and so they as a common habit put the letter in, in back and the number in front so and look here i have two z squared three z to the fifth five and z to the ninth i'm going to combine the two three and five 2, 3, and 5 are going to combine to make 30, because 2 times 3 times 5. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 5 is 30. I'm going to combine all the z's. You have 2, 5, and 9, and you're going to have 16. Now, I put them together. Touching means times, so 30 z to the 16th. Also, we so have this here, 5 times a squared, 6 times g to the 5th, g times a. Notice how there are different variables. Do one thing at a time. Take 5 times 6 first. Notice how that's going to make 30. Combine the a's together. I have a to the 2nd and a to the 9th. They're going to combine to make a to the 11th. And the, finally, the g's will combine. Notice here how g's by itself. That means g to the 1st. Because if I say any number, let's say c means like c to the 1st. And 7 equals 7 to the 1st. And so on. So whenever you see a number or letter by itself, it means to the 1st power. So. 5 times 6 is 30. a squared and a to the 9th combine. I'm, I'm putting them together, and then the g's I'm putting together. So you have 30, a to the 11th, g to the 6th. Now you might say, well, do I need to combine? Couldn't I just have 5 to the 1st times 6 to the 1st? You could, but it's just easier to multiply the coefficients together to make them easier. Now you try. So go ahead and try these two. Pause. Let's see how you did, hopefully. And you, you can put the letters in any order you like. I just do alphabetical. So 3 times 5 is 15. D to the 1st. D to the 5th makes D to the 6th. 2 H2. H to the 9th makes H to the 11th. 2 times 12 is 24. 5 K's and 2 K's make K to the 7th. 5 W's and 9 more W's makes W to the 14th. Checking time here. Okay. Skills practice. Try these two. Go ahead and pause. Let's see how you did. And it did not give me the correct answer. That's weird. All right, well, let me help you out here then. 
let's see, x to the 19, well, let's do 3 times 5 first, makes 15. Uh, i12, i to the 51st is going to be i to the 63rd. And x19, x19 is going to make x to the 38th. Down here, 12 is by itself, so 12 goes right here. Scratch it out if you like. G is by itself, so G just goes here. G or G to the first, whichever you like. E to the 5, E to the 5 makes 10, 12, 21, so E to the 21st, and that should be good there. Since we, these are not the correct answers, so we're just going to scratch them out. I just did the right answer, so I don't know what I was thinking there, but I must have been doing something different. Now this, 3x squared times 5x to the 7th. Now you need to do three steps. If you do these three steps every single time, this is not going to be a problem for you. And this, by the way, is the same stuff that Algebra 1 will be doing somewhere around Chapter 8 or 9. So you're doing some high-level stuff, but if you take your time, you're going to be fine. First, decide if it's a negative or positive. Now, how do you do that? Well, this is a positive and this is a positive. Remember, two positives make a positive, so you don't have to worry about it. Second, multiply the coefficient. So you take 3 times 5, and you know you get 15. And you add up the variables. You'd say, okay, I have 2x's and 7 more. Make it going to make 9. So notice here. Positive times a positive makes a positive. Okay. 3 times 5 is 15. Got it. Add up the x's, I have 2 and 7, which make 9. Therefore, I'm going to have 15x to the 9th. Now take another. You have negative 4e to the 8th, 2e to the 3rd. It looks like a lot, but let's do one thing at a time. Negative times a positive. Well, negative times a positive is going to make a negative, so I know it's a negative. 4 times 2 makes 8. Okay, negative 8. 80s and 3e is going to make e to the 11th. I don't care that the 8 is negative. It has nothing to do with the exponents. Do one thing at a time. Positive negative. 4 times 2. Combine the e's. You try. Try these four. Go ahead and pause. Let's see how you did. So, uh, positive times negative is negative. 7 times 6 is 42. 5 b's and 3 more b's make b to the 8th. Positive times positive is a positive. 12 times 12 is 144. Z squared times Z makes Z to the third. Why Z to the third? Remember, this is Z to the first. Negative times negative is a positive. You can make a plus or not. It's up to you. 4 times 5 is 20. 8 E's minus 3. Now, this is something new. When you add, remember, when you add these up and you're adding a negative, basically you're just minusing. So 8 minus 3 is 5. So if you had a mistake there, not a problem. We haven't done much of these, but when you combine a positive and a negative, you're going to basically be subtracting. And positive times positive is a positive. 11 times 3 is 143, I do believe. 8 A's, that's all I got. 3 B's, that's it. I can't combine, so they go side by side. These two were tricky, so if you had trouble with these, it's okay. You got these two, good. Skills practice. Woo, there's a lot of them. We're going to do these and make this the last thing of this section. So go ahead, at least of this part of the section. So go ahead and try these. Pause. Let's see how you did. Well, just, I'm not going to read them off to you because of time. Just go ahead and take a look. See if they match what you have. Hope they do. And after you've done that, I want you to go ahead and enjoy the rest of your evening. We're going to do more of this in class tomorrow. Thanks again. Bye.